I want to talk to you about everything, remote viewing, 5G. With these solar flares or this portal energy, because I noticed the same thing during Lionsgate, or now I'm starting mm -hmm. to realize that I'm feeling more frenetic mm -hmm. and no sleep or or these things and these emotional or passionate feelings. Can you see that all this emotion that wells up for you is passion? And I want to ride my passion. Mm -hmm. Instead of drowning right. into the emotion of like, it is another manic money. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know what? I don't care. Fine, the milk did what it did. Don't even know how it happened in the fridge. Um, the other day, right in the middle of nowhere, this thing just flies and smashes glass everywhere. And I was like, I have that tendency to be like, is it my energy? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to drown in that anymore. There's just electric energy that we could use right now. Yeah, when we feel more amped up. And I think that's really amped where the portal up. energy is because it's an upward spiral. And I think every time, even when we think about when an airplane is flying above the turbulence, right? There is most certainly during that time when before it, it's coasting in the sky, there's always that turbulent as it's ascending. Mm. So I think that that's really more or less a metaphor that is, is occurring for us as well. Plus I think this is also what speaks so much to our sacral chakra, which is our creative urge, our creative intelligence and energy. Where are the passions that, you know, you mentioned yours was physical movement, as was mine. Because dancing, I realized if I'm not getting my, my dose of dancing every week, I feel as though I haven't been really getting ex that physical exertion, right? Yeah. That fulfillment. And I recall hearing a study, and I forgive me because I want to be able to reference the resource, but I recall hearing a study for, for children who had ADD or ADHD or they had a difficult time staying still in, in school. And their parents would take them to a specific doctor. And this doctor would put them in a room and tell the child, your parents and I are just going to go out of the room for just a moment and discuss a few things. We'll be right back. They would have music playing in this room. And it was one of those two-way mirrors, right? So they can see in the window the child would always start moving to the music. And they said, this child isn't having a difficult time focusing. This child needs physical movement. Put them in sports, put them in dance. And 99% of the time, that was the solution. Yeah. And I think it's really, these are indicators, I think, with the, the portal energy. Okay. We're seeing what isn't serving our life. Where do we feel like we are not filling our own cup? <laughs> yeah. Whether it's meditation, grounding, um, the somatic work, such as Qigong, yep. journaling, Just self care. Yep, taking self -love. some time for the self care because self care is self love. Exactly. And there's a strong distinction between selfishness and self love. Correct. So I, w I feel like that's maybe a, di a direction we can take this okay. because there's one primary question I think we can ask ourselves that will help us through these challenges, that can help us through the turbulence as we are ascending. And that's generally the intention, is yep. looking at what is the solution of where I want, what do I want to achieve? What is yes. this one question we can ask ourselves that can help us determine how do we overcome this angst or that frenetic energy that you were discussing mm -hmm. when we're feeling the manic Monday? Yeah. <laughs> and seeing where, where does this also align us to our sacral yeah. chakra. Okay, so to recap that, I like when, when I was describing what I'm feeling, you said feeling amped up. And this is back from when we discussed before, you're like, hey, these, um, this energy is to bring light. So I like that you're using the term amped up. So riding the energy in Qigong and amplifying it. So we're given an, an opportunity from, I mean, it's just happening to get amped up. And as we discussed last time, I was like, there's that vibration like that we're gonna feel. So yeah, mm -hmm. I love that you're explaining this. And then it's that spinal 
energy starting or and the sacral mm -hmm. chakra and mm -hmm. so that was kind of what we wanted to talk about today in the podcast when I was saying hey Camille what are you doing when you're feeling this intensity and you know we can name a, a million things the moon that's guiding our cycles our home or, or the water and blood in our body our emotions. Um, and yeah our emotions um, we could blame it on the eclipse energy we could portal and and so and the solar flares so anytime that's happening that's what you just kind of answered for me is ask the question number one so that we can feel we can shift out of whatever it is that we're feeling the resistance and that almost for me I'm like oh no I can feel the fear sinking in and I do want to go to overwhelm but ask the question which is the intention of hey how can I ride the energy and and you're saying well yeah let's flip this we're not getting sleep we're not so let's look for the solution and answer and so on that to recap how do we get to that solution that you're really great at with this so one was the physical I mean we gave an example and we happen to talk about ADHD with children so how does that apply to us do you mm -hmm. think that even though we're so this is what I want to do when I don't get sleep I start going into fear mode of, oh no, I have my podcast and this, and I'm not going to have energy. And you know what? I have found, just like you, well, time to go move some energy first. Yeah. So that's part of the answer, right? Part of the solution right. is if we're feeling ADHD amplified by the energy, however you want to explain that you're feeling restless, or, you know, not rested, and, you're, and we're, because it is something out outside and we can ask the questions is this coming from internal we establish it's outside then what are our tools one is the movement mm -hmm. yeah I think that's a great question too because oftentimes in society we're always looking for some sort of a solution externally right mm -hmm. so I we like to look at what can we do to cultivate it internally and you use the example that when we do feel like there's this frenetic chaotic energy how do we go back to the tools and resources that we have access to? And if our focus, if we feel like we're exper experiencing the monkey mind, the analytical mind, or there's too much undirected focus, yeah. where we feel scattered, we Stimulation. have to over stimuli. Over, yeah, yeah, the stimulus, yeah. over stimuli. Then you said it best, fill your own cup, turn the attention and focus on one thing because our focus is our power. Yeah. So if we, if we recognize that our focus is on too many things, we have to take one step at a time. Yeah. Okay, we'll get back to this message, this email, this project. I will set it aside and get to one thing at a time. If we take a moment to honor that, then yeah. what we're doing is we are harnessing the energy and we're redirecting the energy. Mm -hmm. So the focus, our energy really is what's helping us to create that flow state. Yeah. And that vibrational resonance, right? So it's how do we recalibrate our own energy? So as within, so without, because we'll see the internal conditions shift the external conditions, yeah. right? So I think, like you said, the most important question we can ask ourselves is what's the intention? What do yeah. I want? What do yeah. I want instead? So that's the focus. So changing the focus to the intention. And then the second most question I think we, or second most important question we can ask ourselves is, what am I meant to learn from this? Yeah. So what is this experience teaching me? <laughs> it's always, the, yes, it's, it may always kind of come with a little bit of a sigh. However, we realize if we don't learn what it's meant to teach us, we're going to keep bringing it into our experience. We're yeah. going to continue to repeat that lesson. As and I know, literally, right? that's the resistance yeah, too, isn't but it? it? But I literally feel myself recreating, but also feeling myself, hey, let's stop this pattern. So that's mm -hmm. good. Which awareness. How we change the pattern. Yes. The, the awareness mm -hmm. of simply pausing, doing the check mm -hmm. of in. I feel overwhelmed, um, you know, doing a check. Okay. In this case, we're talking about clips energy or this yes. energy that's coming in and it's for our benefit, but it sure doesn't feel like it when it happens. I mean, we're like, oh, yay, there's going to be this portal and I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> However, we can first take a deep breath, 
because yeah. the deep, deep having the deep breathing helps to put us into that parasympathetic state so that yes. we're self-regulating yes then if we can yeah. allow ourselves to carve out 10 15 minutes to do some kind of an energetic shift yes. whether it's meditation qigong exercise journaling whatever we feel our body is needing right is our body is there some physical energy that needs to be moved out or is there some emotional energy yeah. that needs to be and you know for some of us it's a culmination of both yeah or if we feel like there's some emotional energy yeah. sometimes we can even use some physical exertion or vice versa right but um, I like that you use the term resistance because I think resistance is by far one of the biggest steps when we feel that there's a state of paralysis, stagnant, or we're circling around the problem. Yeah. Because resistance really comes down to how resilient are we becoming, whether it's physical resilience, emotional resilience. The resistance is where the fear is. Right, it's fear. So then naming your pattern, like you said, are you freezing? Are you running? I, I mean, we all sometimes yep. do a combination yep. or hit on one. But even realizing that, and then the breath comes in, and then wanting to present yourself, right? And then you can call on any one of your books that you've read or tools that you've done, and and I and I love that. But it's it's really finding the opportunities to practice that, but then just <laughs> realizing how many times you do the old pattern in the moment, and then and then I realize practicing breathing into the resistance, breathing into the fear trying to turn it to excitement or whatever, you know, and realize I really am, what am I needing, what am I passionate about, what am I wanting yes. to connect to, mm -hmm. then surfaces what my fear is, or then surfaces the guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. And so the guilt and shame back to what we said before, once I figure out or we figure out it, it is some culmination of guilt or shame, then it is that self-love. Mm -hmm. And for me... Oh, that's a very, um, I mean, that's that's a work in progress. I mean, it is of, aware, right? yeah, mm -hmm. of how yeah. much awareness you're allowing mm -hmm. that self-love. And then especially when this resistant or this energy comes in and you're feeling resistant, it is, this is the opportunity during an amplification of the energy to really, like you've said, an opportunity to see what we can change, what shame and guilt how can we repurpose that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So first of all, I think those are tremendous steps and exercises to help us move this resistance and move this shame out um, and to help to repattern. So you look at, first of all, you said the first step was to recenter yourself. So now you become present by naming the pattern. So that way we are becoming self-aware mm -hmm. and we're looking at, again, the one thing that sometimes we, we may feel a little bit resentful of is what is this event teaching me? But the reason why that reframe is so important is because it can shift us the signif most significantly so we're no, we can dissolve more of the resistance mm -hmm. and no longer repeat, yes. continue to repeat the pattern. This is, this is everyone's psychology. This is how our, all of our programming works. Yes. So we have to move through ways of recoding the programming. And, and again, it's always coming down to some kind of a limiting belief, which is the fear. Yeah, right? or what are we the resisting? point of insertion when we first started relying on this behavior pattern. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, when it came from some conditioned event, yep. some imprinted experience from childhood, yes. or even, again, what could be a generational yes, pattern. Yes, we just named the five know. different ways we could name. But exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is yes. all of those mm -hmm. things. It's yep. your upper limiting belief. Mm -hmm. It is your... What was the ideology? Did it come from society? Did it come from childhood? You will find different layers of this, and it's all. And it's just stripping away, who, who are you now? And who's, yes. pro, whose program, mm -hmm. whose ideology are you playing out? Yes. And then connecting that to? Excellent questions. And I, I think there's a lot of different ways we can approach that mm -hmm. because there's... This is a layered, a yeah. very layered um, concept. So, for instance, I'm just going to use an example because okay. I think this is an example that's really common for many, for many, is the fear of abandonment, right? So let's just say, for instance, a child may have felt abandoned by a parent. And in that moment, the child may feel the desire to withdraw, developing kind of almost an alter ego or a different behavioral pattern of withdrawing. 
whenever they feel as though their needs aren't met, they don't feel seen, heard, loved, whatever the case may be. Or there's other alternatives. There could be a pattern of they're going to try harder to get their parents' attention, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, their their parents are paying more attention to Mm -hmm. a sibling that may be requiring attention because they're, they're undergoing some illness or sickness, right? So the other sibling may feel as though their needs are undergone or overlooked. So what do they need to do? Maybe they need to develop some kind of a sickness to, in order, in order to feel loved, right? Mm -hmm. That's just kind of an example. So our sicknesses are occurring. This is where we start to develop a pattern and there's these neuro tags, right? These neuro associations that we see, oh, the same time that one printed can event conditioned our programming yes so we start to see these programs continue throughout our life yes so the I, awareness the piece. awareness of it yeah so i love that you use those examples of those steps and what we can do to recognize that there's generally shame but yeah. the best way to begin i think working through the blind spots and the self-awareness is looking at the unresolved emotion or the trapped the trapped suppressed emotion which is very common we will get to the bottom layer of the shame and that's where we experience the stagnation and it's okay because shame shame may really look like when my parents abandoned me i didn't yes. feel loved okay, that's all so it is the, yeah right i yeah. didn't feel loved i felt like my my sibling was being you know receiving the extra dose of love that yeah. i really want and then you're like oh that that's makes okay. sense yeah and then how can you love yourself then yes now and Absolutely. that's kind of what we started with was moving to the hey, solution think back to childhood or adolescent time what did you love to do when you felt good about yourself or whatever and or now i mean in in my case i think that's a restructuring of people who literally can't name what their hobbies are or right. what their right. passions Passion are, or through their children sure. or their husband, you know, the answer like, well, my husband does this, or what my do child I want? does that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So common. the reason why I say maybe link it back mm-hmm. to childhood, but now, I mean, we're pretty clear on ours, but I would say even myself, I'm a mover, but like I say, if my sleep's off, then oh no, the whole day is going to be <laughs> shrouded mm-hmm. with resistance mm-hmm. because I didn't get sleep, and that's one thing where I'm like, you know. I'm going to start saying some of this is and or, or giving other things and how can I ride through it without the, wave, the yes. shame of oh no I'm not sleeping or feeling flooded of emotions right yeah okay. um, I think that's the question that we all ask ourselves it's universal we no matter how how aware we could be of the psychology around this or other energy healing We may have so much of that mastered, we're still going to have these human experiences. Yeah. So this is something, as you and I both know, whether we are navigating through this on our own and we're applying these these techniques, it's it's a very ongoing. Yeah. (laughs) We can we can always count on how it being ongoing. Yeah. That self love is, for the most part, I think the, um, a lot of really what we're aiming for what we're always reestablishing in our life yeah. right is greater capacity to have self-love because yes. we're looking for that higher magnitude of loving others and the right? less the shame mm-hmm. and guilt you ditch out yes. you can get more of that love right in. but the there i think it's an ongoing i don't i i would assume of that <laughs> play of okay i've worked on shame in this part mm-hmm. or i mean it just seems to keep cropping up and another opportunity Most to certainly. get deeper to self-love but I will say you can feel the shift over time where yes it's still there but the the capacity like you say is greater and deeper Mm -hmm. to the extent in which we're going to love ourselves right is the extent we can we can really share love to others and even the the world at large and we can feel valued as well as contribute that value yes perfect. and that's the community piece when you know you're getting out of your own head Mm -hmm. and even though you're still working on things but you know (laughs) that you're aligning to your purpose Mm -hmm. and that's back to passion naming your passion finding the simple hobbies but then it chances are it aligns deeper to the gifts that you have to share and Mm -hmm. once those things come naturally like you know Oh, gee, I overcame my abandonment issues. It was such a deep thing for me. But now it doesn't hold so much energy. I am actually able 
to listen to someone else or teach them the tools or simply just be great just be a greater friend to the 30 people in your life even if you don't decide to become a yoga teacher or a therapist your awareness of witnessing those people in your life because you were helped and witnessed to get to a point of a certain awareness that's when you can deal with gee Camille I still wake up sometimes feeling this mm-hmm. but it's I'm reestablishing, you know, as you said, the neuro tags. I'm able to be like, boop, I mm-hmm. can, we're lessening, reestablishing those connections, patterns. And then, it, and the barometer and the way that I tell is mm-hmm. how much I am engaged with my passions that seem to in, intermingle mm-hmm. in every part of my life. Yes. Which is yes. being able to help others with their purpose or, or figure some of these things out. And I think that's what can happen and that's the hope and message that I always hoped for myself like hmm maybe at some point I'll feel this way because I can see others are Mm -hmm. so but there is always I feel this opportunity I mean we're ongoing (laughs) working through it's never I mean I used to look at people and be like (laughs) oh so they do not have any strife because they're helping people good for them that they're able Mm -hmm. to no they still are so that's the lovely and that's the reality and in a way, I think it's really what brings us all together, too, to empathize. And I think that you empathize. really <laughs> extended and shared some excellent points and some things I want to talk about, too, because I think there's so much information overload in, you know, particularly that we have access to within the public reach. And yet we're hearing a lot of the what to do. And even though we're kind of discovering a little bit the how, there's a lot of information without the transformation, and we know the transformation is the how-to pieces. So I want to be able to bring a lot of that together because you went to a lot of the passions, the how do we get to the passion? How do we get to Mm. the love? How do we alchemize this, the shame and be able to transmute the shame? So even though we're, I think, dropping a few, you know, pieces and and clues, I think that sometimes those how to's are really where we kind of feel stuck. And even when we're in a state of, okay, I'm having a blind spot or I'm feeling a little bit energetically blocked. Um, we all have those moments, right? And we, we can use sometimes some support system to help deconflict that or even decode it. So if we are experiencing the shame, all right, so my sibling was sick and needed my parents' attention during a time that I wanted the attention. It can very easily be I felt guilty that I wanted the, the love and attention when my sibling was, was going through some illness. However, if we look at what really served everyone's highest good, what was best for everyone, and allow ourselves to be available to the emotion that it's okay. Our self-worth isn't hanging on our mm-hmm. parents' love. And if we revisit the, we don't always have to revisit the trauma, but we can more or less access kind of the prefrontal cortex by, by taking some time to explore what did that mean to me, mm-hmm. right? What was the experience? What was I wanting from that? We were wanting to feel loved. How did we want to feel loved? That's how we can start to love ourselves. Again, we want, we want to feel heard, seen, acknowledged. So that's what we can start working on with ourselves. Yeah. How do we love ourselves? Mm-hmm. And if we have mm. a difficult time knowing how to self-love, mm-hmm. it could be, as you said, what do we love to do? What are we passionate mm-hmm. about? If we start there, it can really allow us to start moving in forward into that trajectory. In this instance, it is asking these questions. So in the how-to... Mm-hmm. Um, so are you literally kind of writing out these questions or just doing a process in your mind? So, sure. Yeah. I think that when we use the reframe, such as what is this teaching me, for instance, if we can go back to that, this can help us to shift it into a little bit more of gratitude because we feel like in our mind, we don't ha- we're no longer really associating to the hardship of it, but we're associating to some kind of a gain. So you're, sure. yes, you're reframing, you know the trigger or the abandonment, it was shame. And so now it's thinking back, but yeah. So sure. yeah. asking the right the questions process. will help us to okay. get to the right questions. I believe is the, the shortcut okay. to really getting us to to the answer, to yeah. the solution. And if we are maybe going in retrospect, realizing, okay, we have these neurotags, we have these new memory revoking events, 
right? Okay, now I'm, I'm back in a situation where I'm wanting to feel loved like I did when I, in my youth, when I didn't feel loved from yes. my, my parents or I felt abandoned by my parents. So maybe we're see, still seeing cycles of abandonment that are continuing, right, to surface for us. That's when we generally go back and ask the questions. We just, all we need to do is really process what was unprocessed because yeah. perhaps we didn't have the, the parental mindset in, in, in childhood, in our childhood. So when we ask those questions, we can look at what is this meant to teach me? And it's always about how to receive. It's always mm. about expanding more of our container to mm -hmm. receive because we may not have felt loved. And so therefore, it left a print on our self-worth. So and how may, does that look sometimes? We may move forward in life realizing we're, we're allowing ourselves to receive less and no that's i see that it's resisting limiting ourselves re limiting the resistance resisting the very thing that you wanted absolutely if abandonment because of the patterning correct mm -hmm. yes yeah, so, yeah and so it's we know that we re choose these patterns um, but Which once we, we have the mm -hmm. opportunity, yeah. uh, slowing it down enough to say, like, you're like, okay, abandonment, shame. How is it manifesting now? It's resistance. And, and then how do you suddenly say, okay, I'm ready to receive love. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So some of that is the mm -hmm. self love. Yep. So you get yes. to hear. And for me, what would be another thing? So you're realizing, okay. I'm enough awareness that I realize I'm resisting mm -hmm. receiving, right. but how now do I practice right. that? Yes. Excellent question, because this is really where we go through the, the transformation, which transmutes the problem into the solution, right? So when we ask our ourselves the question, what is this teaching me? It can help us shift mm. ourselves into a little bit more of the appreciation mm. and gratitude, right? So we know that if we are aligning now to the vibration of appreciation, some gratitude, now we can start working with that and recalibrating, as you were saying. So we're yeah. kind of choosing this, but we're changing and repurposing the intention to now how can I receive? So if we don't have appreciation or find things that we can't appreciate, we have nothing. Yeah. Right. And, and this is really our most creative capacity too. Correct. Is really operating from the level of gratitude, appreciation, because love is the essence of who we are, and the love is our creative electromagnetic field. Correct. Right? So, and it needs to be expansive. And if there's resistance, this is an opportunity mm -hmm. to look at, like during an eclipse period or portal period. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are exactly. going to come right up against one of our deepest revisit it, mm -hmm. even in from yes. a different way and mm -hmm. or an older, wiser perspective, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But it will come up. And so then for me, asking those questions, I, sometimes I still get overwhelmed. And then that's where a little nuance from these things. Yeah, the grat what is going to bring me gratitude? Maybe moving an image. Mm -hmm. um, so some of these bring in some of your senses or ways that you, if it's kinesthetic, knowing some of those, like I think helps with the self-love because when, when you're gripped by shame and it's an opportunity to work through that, but <laughs> you're needing to go to the parasympathetic nervous system, you know, calm things down. Um, that's where I think, an image or something pulls me out of my head where the questions I get locked up and I, I just start looping questions and so I like how we referenced you know a little bit back we could move um, because yes. when you start going and experiencing mm -hmm. the shame there is resistance and, mm -hmm. and sometimes and if you're at a point of awareness where you're like I've been meditating long enough or practicing these things long enough that you can go through it and let yourself go to sadness. That's great. Mm -hmm. And that you can identify this. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the hope that practicing this, yes. we get there. But when there is the shame and it's gripping fear, then the self-love is, the, the love is the anecdote, but it's like how, mm -hmm. and it's going yes. to the child for for me and for mm -hmm. many, because then you back off the innocence. Because if I go to adult Laura, it's like, well, 
let's just pile on guilt because where are you today? Like you should be so much further. But when I go to, you know, when we can go to the child, the self-love, yes. that's the thing that will, you can sit in it more. Mm -hmm. And like you said, experience the emotion. Mm -hmm. So it gives you enough opportunity to pull off a lot of the fear and then sit in that emotion and and what and that's the answer right it you is. can you can right. see the gratitude right. the shift in perspective mm -hmm. where if it was your sister or whatever the environment was and the yeah. culture was you were doing your best but now how do we ditch this shame and mm -hmm. guilt yes today <laughs> you know and not get gripped by mm -hmm. fear because we all have a natural propensity to go to guilt and I happen to believe there's a lot of different reasons for that, which I won't really um, delve into entirely. But I think mm. there's a lot of conditioning mm. that that love, because it is the ultimate. I think it is the totality mm. of our experience. I think that when whenever we are experiencing anything that somehow isn't a full, fully taking us into the the portal of of self love or the portal of love. We realize the conditioning is teaching us that it's selfish. It's selfish to love ourselves. It's selfish mm. to have our, our 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 cup filled, right? Yeah. And that is what I think I see a little bit more in societal pro programming, right? And it may be a, a mind control, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So I think those are some excellent questions because, you know, getting to love is really where love well, heals all. So things. that conditioning, like, what what's another example of why? I mean, the message of love, like you said, mm -hmm. and the guilt. The guilt. Right. I mean, we know, okay, we... Staying stuck in the victim mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, staying <laughs> yes. stuck in the z victim mm -hmm. mind. Choosing into um, perhaps a paradigm where you could play that out a lot right. of times. Right, because they're really just operating from the ego, right? The ego yep. is the fear programs, and how do we overcome fear? We have to overcome fear with faith, but how do we, how do we really get to faith? Because if everything happens according to our beliefs, where we put faith in, then we know we have to focus on correcting the beliefs or perhaps removing any of the distortions, illusions, or the lower distorted, you yes. know, and um, density energies. So I think it's really important when we, you used the word opportunity before, and I think that's a really good term to use. And that is part of what I think is another reframe around when we experience these challenges or Correct. this portal energy, it is an opportunity for us to look at, we're now being allowed this moment to transform this belief, to transform this pattern. And that is the reason it's surfacing right now. So if we've experienced it in times past, then we can really secure and button it up a little bit more. Yes. We always have an opportunity to perfect it, yep. perfect with a, you know, an abstract concept but whatever is most ideal for us, whatever aligns to us, um, aligns to the ideal solutions. And we ask, how do we want to love ourselves more? Because we are worthy of love. Mm -hmm. And when we start to apply the love for ourselves, whether it's the emotion, knowing energy in motion, we can move, do yeah. what we love, what do we appreciate in life? And how do we love our sibling who was sick? Absolutely. But do we also love ourselves? And so, Rather than operating from a limited mind, a limited perspective, we can have an expanded perspective around we can have both feel loved and be loved. And so that right there, towards the sibling, since that's the example, you know, the abandonment and, and that. And then, so you gain, that's the transmuting, I think, of, I mean, you're almost gaining more empathy, right? Sure, yes. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. the, right, that's the gratitude, yes. the forgiveness. And then, yes. and then, and then replacing that with what self love mm -hmm. since you're ditching some of yeah. this guilt and shame yes how, what forms of self love come how does that i guess like explain Rebuild. that to me mm -hmm. like how do you know that that's happening the sure. self love sure it's a practice first of all right yeah <laughs> and i and you you mentioned empathy great great principle because that is one of the most when when we have arrived to empathy then we know we have accessed our higher emotional intelligence and access one of the highest functions of the frontal lobe. Yeah. So we mm. are mm. generally missing the step of the em empathic piece or the compassionate piece. Mm. And that is generally where the healing is because we're, we're applying love. And we know that when we do apply love, love heals all things. Therefore, it heals 
programming, the pattern. Yeah. So when we've arrived to love, that is where we're transmuting it. Yeah. And if we feel love for ourselves, what would we do for ourselves? Yeah. How would we want to love our? How would we want to feel loved by others that we can love ourselves? If we want to feel acknowledged, if we want to feel seen, if we mm. if we just want thirty minutes of, of alone time, yeah, then we have to be the ones to yeah. to really apply and and, and honor that. Yeah, whatever and, that looks. And like, I love right? that. Like so, and we love to nuance personalities and archetypes, things like that. But for me, I mean, one of my values in life that I always go back to is freedom. And, you know, when I work through, and I see others work through the victimization, that, that triangle that we like mm -hmm. to stay on, yep. I mean, that's kind of the shadow, um, but the gift, when you work through and use this process we've been talking about, I mean, that ties to abandonment, and then there's right. the victimhood with right. the sibling, but for me, when I know I'm having the self-love is when I'm feeling that expansive freedom. Yeah, Right. No matter what's mm -hmm. going on in the world, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on in my inner worlds, if I am feeling free, mm -hmm. then I am riding that energy. Absolutely. But it may take, it may come with that turbulent opportunity yes. for growth, yep. you know, to look mm -hmm. at a deep seated mm -hmm. issue and make sure, wow, in this case, um, I can go to self-love because I can find what makes me feel free. Absolutely. And freedom is, when we have established the feeling of freedom, we have now connected to, as you said, the abundant consciousness, the expansive consciousness. And the freedom really is, I believe, the the arrival that you're there. Yeah. Right? That is the transmuting energy because you, you use even the term imaging. So when we are having a difficult time looking at how to deconflict any of our circumstances. Like looking at and feeling part of a narrative. Feeling, feeling limited, attached to a narrative. Feeling, yeah, yeah. Feel, yeah, exactly. Attached to whatever that narrative is. How do we want to change the narrative? What is the ideal? What is the new ideal intention and narrative that we would like to create? And allow ourselves to really take full free reign to do this. You mentioned um, your experiences and what your step is to get to the freedom. So what does freedom look like for us? What does it feel like for us? That could be the question. Yeah. Because that's really going to align us the, to the solution, right? Yeah. And when we uh, feel more aligned to the solution, that's when we can really shift our attention yeah. there. Like when you're not feeling the need to control, for instance, Certainly. if we go back to the, or mm -hmm. whatever the habits are, and and you're knowing that you deserve, or a, you're feeling the more ease in asking for what you need from yourself, from others. Mm -hmm. um, that's the freedom. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're feeling and other people, the relationships are feeling more authentic right. because you're voicing, Hey, I'm feeling this right now. I mean, and so important. Yes. So important. And I think that's something I also, mm. as you said, you know, what's another societal conditioning. Okay. How do we communicate and express our needs? We hide it and we hold it mm -hmm. in because, and we repress it. Yeah, look, I mean, let's take <laughs> and we it. We do, we do. And, and then we try to placate others' emotions or spare feelings or we're really, uh, you know, concerned about somehow violating that peace. We really want that harmony violating in the relationship, the peace, right? Just, yeah, so it's um, the last one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Seeing that it's um, really important because I do think that is another con conditioned um, programming mm. in society because in, in, and I'm not even going to say times past, I even would say currently, but we, if we did communicate our feelings, if we did have a voice, there were certainly a, a cost to it. There was a cost in society, as we know, right? Mm. Whether it's the guillotine. And a lot of this does continue mm. to go through the ancestral blood, yeah. right? Through epigenetic that we experience, we realize even women, women have not been allowed or had the liberty to really communicate their voice, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And we even see that in a patriarchal system, getting into a whole different subject Or for there. whatever culture or whatever ideology, whether you're in the United States or you're in a family or you're in a different country, Mm -hmm. um, we've, I mean, society. we've been able to see or had friends enough mm -hmm. or have lived in other yes. places to learn that here right. isn't always normal, right? And so to see the different perspectives, the different ideology, mm -hmm. the different 
cultures that are practice it, practiced yeah. or ritual. And even. the different layers mm-hmm. of Religion. not having a voice, no matter if mm-hmm. you're yes. heterosexual, um, female. I mean, well, we've seen it all. Right and walk of life. Yeah. Yes. So amidst all of that, mm-hmm. you have an opportunity at all time to feel a victim mm-hmm. or not. Yes. And to transmute, but it really is the self love to get there because. And Laura, it's a practice for me. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, I I look at opportunities where I realize this is an opportunity for me to be able yeah. to communicate my needs. It's an day. opportunity for me to be able to learn how to be self expressed. And and even if I felt like I have mastered that, there's yeah. always another opportunity to continue to communicate mm-hmm. and share. And you know, and and we can also do it to learn how to cultivate in in. And in more harmonious fashion yes. within a relationship. So it doesn't necessarily have to come out raw. It doesn't have to be because I think that there's this fear that somehow we're not going to engender that that peace within our relationship. Completely. Right? And yeah. so that is what will prevent us from being able to communicate and share what's yeah. in our heart. When really we know it's the vulnerability mm-hmm. and authenticity of Yes. Oh, good, you're naming things. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the primary indicators of where we are not practicing self love is when we feel like mm. we are in so many ways, I think, withholding what we want to what we want to share and what we feel. Yeah. So if we can first mm. sometimes if we need to write it out, that's okay because that can be a a practice step or sleep on it if it's something that is a very important or significant topic that mm. maybe we're really trying to develop a little muscle around yeah. then we can write it out and i think often times i think sleeping on it helps us to give us a new perspective and what is it what can come forward now from the heart but i think what's really important too in the practice of self love as you mentioned is doing the envisioning process the imaging mm. um, looking at what image is coming forward for us in a solution that we want it's mm. the thought and the feeling signals. It's the the heart and brain coherence. And that's yeah. really where our creative intelligence comes alive. Yeah. That's where we are creating and transforming our conditions. Yes. What and then like the, you said, the emotion, then you see that you can experience with the image, right? Yeah. The support for the unresolved emotion that's suppressed. Mm-hmm. And support could look, you know, has many different facets. It can look at like a million different things for us, right? Yeah. Um, the support could be, I choose to feel loved. I choose to feel, you know, supported in my life in areas yeah. that I may be actually learning how to step up. I may be learning how to overcome a weakness, right? Yeah. And I choose to, and it's always a choice. We we choose a new narrative. We choose to have support. We choose to ask for the support. And again, yeah. this, these are just practices, you know, self love practices. And like you said, what does that look like? What does that feel like? And I think once we really have arrived to that place, as you said, where we feel expanded in freedom, then Hmm. that's where we have significantly shifted. That's where we have healed a lot of the programming. But we have to recognize there's going to be a continual, you know, practicing in that solution. And we have to sustain that solution and continue to move forward there. Instead of allowing our, our energy to be squandered. And realizing, like as you were saying that, I was thinking about the process. Um, so sometimes it is a lot of reading those books, you know? Mm, sure. And um, when you had mentioned before that, I don't know, something, it looks very selfish mm-hmm. to do self-love. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks very narcissistic or whatever when you're spending a lot of time working out your own neuroses. Mm -hmm. And I actually read, I think, um, years ago from Richard Rudd in that Gene Keys, when he was saying, absolutely, if you are a person ready to practice and help your community, like we said, some of those steps. So Mm -hmm. I think there is a period where absolutely you're like, I've spent a lot of time, Mm -hmm. money, resources on... Self-development. Self-development and personal growth. Mm-hmm. And when is this ever going to end? And then it does. I mean, yeah. it's an ongoing thing, as mm-hmm. we've been saying. But then you're not a lateral obsessed. Process, yes, you're not. Yeah. And you're applying and you're practicing. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of why we decided to do this podcast, too, is because that's what we talk about in our friendship mm-hmm. and in our and what we help people with in, in our, our lives. day-to-day lives. Yeah. And how we say, hey, the... The goalpost always moves in a way. I mm-hmm. mean, because it is just a layer after layer. Mm-hmm. But we thought sharing these things and these tools 
would help us where we need to direct our own voice. We're en- we love to move energy, mm-hmm. but we also love to process things verbally yeah. and work things out and share mm-hmm. and always willing to upgrade our perspectives and beliefs for other. I mean, and, and, and so that's where we thought, okay, what if we make a podcast or a place where others can, sure. because if we're... F- benefit. Like, we've tried to find certain things online, or mm-hmm. and we just decided this would be would fit part of our the things that we need to do to connect Absolutely. to our passions, too. Mm-hmm. So, yes. that's another example of it became very evident. I'd been thinking about it for a couple of years, or whatever you had been thinking. I mean, off and on for oh, years, right. but I just yes. thought I need the confidence, whatever. And then it just came to a point where we it was natural mm-hmm. for us. So that's an, an example of present day. Hey, this tool, this mm-hmm. podcast tool for us, really mm-hmm. channels a lot of our intention that 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 we need filled. I mean, knowledge and just the why and how. Certainly. Yeah. And, and so... And I tend to yeah. think that we become experts in the challenges that we learn to overcome, too. Yes. Because so, you know, a lot of my life, I looked at my upbringing and, you know, there was trauma. And I know we all define trauma differently because it can it can be micro levels of trauma. It could be areas where we felt rejected by a friend or even by, you know, even a, a small little crush. And these are just little moments that start to change our behavior and we adopt a new behavior, but that new behavior, even though there's gifts in it, there's also some unresolved emotion and there's mm-hmm. unresolved trauma. So for myself, for instance, that I feel was really what contributed to kind of a, a negativity bias, which is a kind of a dominant mm. negative thinking programming that negativity you know, bias for yourself. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like so for these example. practices. So for example, okay, others are more fortunate than I am. Yes. Right. I have to work hard to get ahead. That was kind of a common programming yeah. that I, you know, I realize is something that is, there's always some course correcting. So with these practices, because we all have different purposes where we really have our passions, right? Whether it is in the, you know, personal growth and development or whether it's focusing on financial gains and advancement or other yeah. strong suits and professions. So everyone has a different different area and I think for you and I a lot of it has been in in the holistic scope Mm -hmm. so whether it's the healing tools and methods the mind body connection a lot of these tools I think have been very helpful for us to help us to upgrade our neurochemistry so that we can take a look at how to have better outcomes better circumstances but to overcome a lot of that trauma and see in whatever way that we believe can we can contribute again a lot of this to yeah and bring to voice others. to it and use our own voices wherever we felt maybe we held back in the past or mm-hmm. I mean this is part of completing mm-hmm. some of that I think or it's just it's a natural it might have been um, a weakness before and is now a strength right. through, like you right. were saying through mm-hmm. the wound through the um. Yeah, I think we can help translate some of these ideas that we hear. Mm-hmm. I mean, even trauma, like yeah, trauma, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or yeah, the, you know, it it hardships, it is. struggles, yes. setbacks, yeah. whatever they need, be. they grounded. show up in their yeah. They but I think the common theme is the patterns. Where yes. are we where are we seeing the patterns is where we're really trying to address the programming, and we could even do a quick little recap that when we take a look at these patterns. We need to decode them and take a moment of self-awareness. Take a moment to self-assess, naming the pattern. Like you said, it's very important for our prefrontal cortex to do that. And it's helping us to gain the self-awareness so that we now can shift the pattern or use a new narrative. Love and it. what is the emotion? There's always some kind of a fear mm-hmm. or some resistance. And resistance just means we're not loving it, but we're experiencing fear. Yes. And where, how can we actually now have faith? in a new solution yes. or choose to have the love, right? Because yes. it could mean, I don't love my job, right? But I keep yes. finding jobs that I don't love or I keep finding positions or something you know, bad in the work atmosphere or environment. So that could be a very common pattern, right? Correct. And if we continue to find ourselves in the same, you know, being the common denominator, how can we love our job? You're go- that is a very important piece because I will say, I've read, I mean, Louise Hay always say, she's just like, Listen, you want to get a new house, you want to get a new job, anything you do have to li- love mm-hmm. and accept. And and so that's part of the accepting and going into the resistance. And, I mean, even Gay and Katie Hendricks' book say loving yourself yes. 
in that loving yourself in the moment right. of the worst, right? right? And and that is exactly the tools we're talking. Mm-hmm. That's that's the point where if you don't resist it resist it mm-hmm. and you give it time you will get the solution right. keep working at yes. it through this process the questions what's my intention what do i yes. want from this and what can i learn if we can go back to those two questions it could help us again to start learning how to have more love and acceptance for what yeah. we feel like we have been resisting and we're no longer operating from the resistance no, it's right gratitude so it will give us it yes it it, it helps us to ensure that we're gaining a little bit more gratitude yeah. and, and, a, a, and shifting, a, a, you know, yeah, expanding the lens yes. with a new perspective and, and positive reframes. Yeah. What is this teaching me and how is this working for me? If it's working for us in a way that's improving our pattern so we can look at what are we open to? What do we want? What is the intention? And I think what's really important is taking a look at the compassion piece, the empathy piece, because there's always someone maybe who doesn't have our job, or, you know, doesn't have a position, or you know, there's somewhere that we are in relation to or in partnership, or there's some kind of an entanglement that we want the better, best outcome for both. Yeah. And al- appreciation and gratitude will always alchemize that. And then during those entanglements, if it doesn't go well, you know, the entang- you're just finding yourself in another entanglement and mm-hmm. thinking, well, I entangled myself. But then. I think part of the reframe too, or looking back and saying, but am I better than I was two years ago, one year ago, how I'm handling this experience, this entanglement, here Mm -hmm. I am entangled, but how are are you detangling yourself? Is it better? That's where you can ditch some of the guilt and shame too. It's like, you know what? I'm here again. And for some reason we always think in our mind, I find this example, neither one of us have had children, but the childbirth thing where they at least say, you forget the pain of childbirth. Right. Um, somehow you forget it. And somehow I think we forget that it is going to be very painful mm-hmm. <laughs> to go through this childbirth experience to birth new creativity, mm-hmm. right? To and build so creation new, is a painful process. Yes, creation, yes. genius, all of yep. this. Any time a life is created, Someone, every We're mother. We're the portal again. Okay, any <laughs> mother. Okay, yeah. Since I'm on the childbirth, the creative portal, the childbirth example. I always wanted to. If I, I imagined myself having children, and I always wanted to have natural childbirth. But then I would hear the stories, and there was a but. Sure. But then I would hear the stories, and I would almost have to. I remember the three instances. Brace ourselves. I wanted to leave and be like, I know I told you, tell me your child natural childbirth and they were saying it in such a beautiful way which was they felt like they were about to die mm-hmm. to have this birth but then they were like don't worry all the neurochemical dump came in mm-hmm. once you do deliver that made you you know bond sure. and love your child so you yes. essentially yeah. washed over yourself mm-hmm. all that death but overcome, I got overcome stuck pain with pleasure which is love yes, right? yes. but I always <laughs> got stuck in the point where I'm like but your explanation of almost dying and everything yes. you explained was 20 minutes, and that was Suffering one minute. <laughs> so, and I feel like that's the same thing when we, I'm always shocked, and my expectations are always like, what? This again? Like, yeah. this is childbirth. It's childbirth to, again. But it is. If you yes. want to go into a new level, Lovely then we have to go through these mm. Um, upper spirals. We do. Another These level, opportunities another for devil, growth. Another challenge. But mm-hmm. always on the other mm-hmm. end is the child, right? Mm-hmm. This wonderful this child that creation. this person, yeah, mm-hmm. and this beautiful love. thing that I created. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and more love for myself, for others. Yes. But hopefully you're fi- hopefully finding more ease mm-hmm. is what I'm always trying to do is, right. okay, I don't want to scare myself with here we are in another entanglement how can I most rapidly get rid of guilt shame and just go directly to the solution and I think it's discussing mm-hmm. and observing your yeah. process and then being like you know what I'm a lot better than a couple of years ago yeah yeah and this is, can help help us to individually advance from the challenge and become the person that we we really do envision the best version of ourselves and, and override the fear and override the fear and, and ride those love. waves ride those waves <laughs> I'm so glad that we talked today about a little bit more on a, a few things about our fears 
riding the waves of energy, meaning whether they're portal energy, eclipse energy, mm -hmm. um, like we said, the moon with our cycles. I mean, whatever it, mm -hmm. individually we feel, sometimes it's the energy of relationships. relationships. Yeah, right. work. In any way. Sometimes creative physical passions. sensation. But so we kind of gave it a broad example where it's not just one thing, and it's not one thing to blame it on. You can blame it on any of these <laughs> things. And then how can we reframe it? And I think that's one mm -hmm. thing that I love. You always sharing your process and that we actually talk about it from different angles, different examples, because this is what what we are trying to do ourselves, transform mm -hmm. yeah. to deeper levels of awareness, right. to simply make our lives more beautiful um, each day, mm -hmm. and then feeling that freedom. Yeah. yeah, and freedom of, of love and all of that. So thank you, Camille, yes, once again. Laura, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.